Hello guys and welcome to a new war game commentary by me, Vulcan. This is my fifth commentary of this game and today I'm focusing on a reasonably close 1v1 game between me, a level 38, against a level 52 opponent. Um, I was playing Russian, as you can see by me hovering over the units, and this guy Black Pete was playing the NATO side. So if I swivel the map round so you can see it from my perspective, then I can start to commentate on what's going on from my point of view throughout the game. Okay, let's just uh, speed up the deployment now to uh, so I can explain what my original strategy was. Okay, so you can see that I've bought two T-80Us. Now these are the heaviest tanks and most expensive tanks in the entire game. Um, they have a reasonable amount of front armor. They have 10 front armor which matches the the best heavy tanks in the game. They have a extremely long range ACGM and a very good main gun. Um, these two Strop 2s are close air support. Um, or anti-air support should I say and this book here is a long-range missile anti-air support you can see it only carries four missiles and needs to be refueled every time now I've got a recon going off to the left I'm not focusing on the left these two BDRMs are going to Hotel and Bravo now I didn't want to overextend myself onto the left because this is a reasonably hard place to defend unless I use my T-80Us on that side my M9, MI9, which is a big, well, reasonably big, recon helicopter, um, rushes forwards to try and see what the enemy are doing. And I have a little bit of infantry support to cover these BDRMs on the right here. I've also got a recon that's heading over to Bravo to watch this side of the map, so that anything that comes down on this side will be covered by that recon and I can react appropriately. Okay, so to begin with I wasn't sure because this guy was a reasonably good opponent um, I wasn't sure exactly what he was going to do so I park my TAEUs on the edge of the hill which is what most people or most Russians do on this particular map which is uh, called Jewel Field and um, just wait until my BDRMs get in position and I set up my infantry. Now this thing here is a Buratino. This is uh, a close artillery support vehicle. It uh, carries 30 rockets and is extremely accurate with corrected shot, meaning it can absolutely tear apart tank divisions. Um, I don't know, like light units especially, and you'll see me use it throughout this game. But every time you use up the bombardment from it it takes away all 30 missiles at once so it can't be mo used multiple times unless you refuel it and you'll see me bring in some resupply vehicles later in the game to deal with that see at this point I realized that the ATGM was a bit useless further back here so I moved up to cover this BDRM in the meantime I moved these two infantry units up on the right to cover this road down here and any stray helicopters that may be trying to sneak around the side. Now, you're probably wondering what this helicopter is here. This is a helicopter with special forces on it. I didn't realize these chaparrales were here, but before I knew it, it was already shot down and uh, there wasn't much I could really do about that. I should have probably predicted that he would have had some sort of rocket anti-aircraft here, but um, like to protect his command vehicle but unfortunately I didn't really go wide enough round to land my special forces in this village here you can see that he's set up recon similar to me he's got a recon on the left he's got a recon on the right and he's got his own scout helicopter back here he moved this back originally because my 
book came in range when I moved it forwards and the strop came into range as well I believe and he just had to bring it back because otherwise it would have been sitting here my strop would have had missile range on it. Um, my strop only has four missiles for anti-air so that does need to be reloaded by uh, its resupply um, but it also has an auto cannon on it for very close range. Now because I've seen him bring in Jupiters into this uh, forest here and other uh, vehicles I've moved this T-80U over to the right side of this uh, forest area and moved my one of my BDRMs up from Hotel to Foxtrot. This means I get pretty much double the points and I don't see any threat of him pushing through Foxtrot at the, this moment due to my recons providing all of the information I need. So seeing those Jupiters go into the bush I decide to spray it with the Buratino that I was talking about earlier and fire all 30 rockets into this bush. To be honest he's very lucky because the spread of these rockets means that I only slightly damage that Marder 1A1 uh, I kill both of the Jupiters which uh, would be quite annoying for him because they're the resupply trucks that he needs for defensive positions and these Pans Grenadiers don't get hit at all which is yeah crazy in my opinion but uh, either way very lucky for him and I still got 30 points from that but it still doesn't make up for much considering I'd already lost 60 when he shot down the helicopter with my special forces in it now throughout this game he constantly scouts me with this gazelle helicopter and uh, he ends up spotting a reasonable amount. Now at the moment he can't see anything really. You can see my chopper because of this recon here can see it. But uh, other than that you can't see the hell what's going on because most of my units are hidden. If I go back to mine you can see that yeah I'm pretty much the same. He, all his units are hidden as well so I can't see very much and I'm relying very much on this helicopter to show me what's going on and considering that those Jupiters were the only thing I could see I reasonably knew that that was where his forces were now at this point this MI9 can take a reasonable amount of damage because it is a heavy scout helicopter but this chaparral <laughs> misses two of its shots and hits with two and um, actually sets it alight anyway but I have to go back and get that fixed it was very lucky it didn't actually get shot down because normally two shots from a chaparral will take that out okay so now you can see that I've actually brought more units onto the battlefield a lot more units and um, I've brought in a UAZ or bringing in a UAZ to replace on the right for my recon as well as moving this one forwards uh, considering this recon helicopter had to go back so I don't want to be blind on this front otherwise my T-80Us and other BMP and motor strokey won't be able to like fire at max range um, he sees this uh, Scott go around but I unload the Fiscari up here of his Akari and uh, put them into one of these buildings so that I can make sure that this road is protected at all times in case they try and rush me into Frockstrot. Now this Scott is actually reasonably funny because it actually manages to get uh, somewhere over here. Um, it has nothing in it unfortunately so I can't like unload and destroy anything but um, he manages to just drive straight through their lines no problem and um, yeah it's reasonably crazy to be honest I was just I was typing to him at this point saying that has nothing in it I don't think he reasonably like he actually believed in me but uh, there we go anyway if we go back to the neutral perspective I can show you that I've brought in a couple of T-55s on this side here and a couple of ones on this side here now T-55s are reasonably crap they don't have a machine gun so they can't defend themselves from helicopters very well or at all and uh, they just have a main gun and it's not very good if I info display you can say see that it only has three accuracy four AP so they need to be like very close range but I can see that he's starting to use I, I believe I spot at one point he's, he's using Marder 1A1 so T55s are a good thing to use against uh, ATGM vehicles as they soak up the ATGMs for the heavier tanks 
Um, the T55s, um, basically you get one shot by them, but you don't want a T80, you taking one inside, so it's worth it. Um, T55s only cost 15 to bring in, and um, the T80U costs 160 to bring in, so I'd rather lose a couple of T55s than my T80U. Um, the T55s, I eventually just end up sending them up there as kind of recon to see what gets attacked or how they get attacked um, to work out which enemy forces are in the like in the enemy forest a little bit of lag there Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> There's a little bit of lag in the middle of the recording. But, um. Yeah. So, anyway, I, I realise that this is reasonably well defended now because I've got T 55s dug into the forest. Now, if they started to push on this side, um, I could just move those T 55s up and they would be in range as soon as they got close. Um. But I'm moving the T-80s on this side because I believe I spot these starships and I believe I can take them with the T-80s. Now, these are reasonably crap tanks. Um, I don't know why he uses them. He obviously favours ATGMs, but they only have an accuracy of 4, so they're very, very unlikely to hit me. They only cost 35 themselves compared to my 160 tanks. If you look at this, you can see, yeah, they cost 160, but they have an ATGM themselves of an accuracy of 8 and a very good main gun. Now he can see exactly where I am because he's got a recon with them. He uses very like different uh, units to what I'm used for throughout this used to throughout this battle, which is what you'll see confuses me later on. Um, he actually gains a massive advantage throughout this game. Um, and then at the end I pull off a crazy stunt which allows me to win it back with it with like the time running out and this is a 30 minute game so hopefully I won't be commentating for 30 minutes so I'll speed it up but I, I spot these chaparrales and my M9 is just lucky enough to get away because um, I, I pushed it forward so that my T-80Us could uh, get into range and fire on these starships. Now I probably should have pushed them up a bit further and fired at these uh, starships with my cannon rather than the ATGM but um, I, th I relied on the ATGM to actually hit them but of course it didn't and you can see that one ATGM from his tank uh, annihilates half the front armour of my T-80U and uh, a couple more and that's 160 points down the drain without even me killing one of his tanks. So I don't know exactly how much he's got 11 AP power, so that's why they did so much damage to the front armor. Um, but yeah, at this point, I'm a bit sort of wondering what to do because I'm not used to this kind of composition of 80 gems from uh, like the yeah, 80 gems from NATO side. So you can see that he uses Panzer Grenadiers, which are very expensive infantry. You can see these ones cost 30, and his Marder 1A1 costs 40. But they all have AG gems. You can see that Panzer Grenadiers have AG gems, Milan F1s. Um, the Marder 1A1 has a AG gem on it. The Starships obviously have AG gems. It, he goes for a very AG gem heavy NATO, NATO side, and I'm not very used to that at all. Okay, so at this point, I wasn't sure what these M, M, what this RT was firing at me because mortars have a incredibly big explosion for what they actually are, and um, I decided to move my BDM, B, BRDM back anyway to avoid getting it hit as a mortar shell lands exactly where it was. Um, yeah, he pushed me out of Foxtrot for a while, but I eventually move it back in. You probably saw me lose a vehicle here. Now, this was to try and snipe his gazelle scout helicopter. I didn't realize he had a recon down here, so uh, otherwise I wouldn't have probably done that. But um, 
yeah, I, I thought this gazelle was his main recon throughout the game, and that's why I, I struggle so hard to shoot it down. Okay, so if you go back to like my point of view, you can see that I can see his units massing on the left side. Now, I'm not really sure what this is for, um, if he's going to start to try and push me from this side. But uh, this was my main defensive line, and I was pretty sure of that. Um, so I make sure to try and, I don't know, like try and get rid of some of his units on the right and again somehow none of my rockets hit anything reasonably useful um, I hit his Marder 1A1 but um, and take out the two supply trucks again but um, I don't hit any of the vital units unfortunately Okay, so considering I've lost my T-80U on the left, I know there's a lot of ATGMs there, but I bring in a couple of heavier tanks, which are the T-80BVs. Now these are the downgrade of the T-80Us, and they cost 140 each. Now, at this point, I was getting so many more points than him. I'd moved up one into Hotel, I'd, I'd got Foxtrot, he hasn't got Golf, um, he's basically got these four objectives which is technically for me these four objectives but I've got Foxtrot which is worth more meaning I'm gonna gradually have more health than he is or health um, s supply than he does now at this point you can see what I was talking about earlier about sending my uh, Moto Stroke and T55s to see how heavily defended this was on the right and um, considering all the 80 gems that came out of that bush, I obviously wasn't confident to attack it with anything heavy. And if I just uh, speed up the game to, uh, to tell you what I'm doing in a minute. Okay, so you can see that I've now got a T-80U, 280 BVs advancing on the enemy. These T-55s are literally 80 GM bait. Uh, unfortunately, the first one gets one hit, so that's a bit of a waste. But um, these T-55s are the ones that are going to move forwards and discover what's firing at them before anything else. In the meantime, I have this Sturm, which is a long-range ATGM vehicle. It is technically a tank destroyer, and all it uses is an ATGM. Um, but it is re reasonably accurate for what it is. You've got 9 accuracy and 14 AP power, which is very, very good for uh, that kind of tank. Now, to distract him, I send in a BMP over here to uh, just test the water again. But uh, that's just to distract him from this advance on the right. You can see that I really struggled to keep this T80 PV out of trouble. Now, I'm trying to face the armor to all of these uh, tanks here that are firing at him with 80 GMs. And unfortunately, one manages to catch me out and hit me in the side. Um, the same goes for this T80 BV, I believe. And uh, this T-80U stays fine throughout the battle as he continues to fire his ATGMs at these starships. You can see the T-80BV took an ATGM into the side, like I said. The Sturm's been the one really doing the damage to these starships. So I just decide to take the T-80U back and, and leave that for another push. Now that there was a reasonably good kill because it was a recon vehicle which made him blind more or less on the left side because this recon here is facing on the right side of this bush because he can't scout through this bit of forest here without being on this side and you can see that he has to replace his vehicle by moving it onto where his old one died. Okay, so what's this you wonder? Now, <laughs> this was my secret weapon. I had so many points built up after this point, and uh, 
I decided to bring in four Havocs. Now this is the max amount of Havocs you can have and they are the most powerful uh, um, air vehicle for the Russians. Now they have auto cannons on the front of them. They have uh, reasonably accurate rocket pods with a high HE power and extremely good ATGMs at which they can fire 30 per minute. Now ATGMs on these helicopters are unlikely to miss. They have an accuracy of 10 and an AP power of 14. That means they can more or less two hit an extremely heavy tank and they can one hit more or less anything else. Now this is what I was waiting for. I was trying to get recon onto his units. And you can see that he doesn't know what the hell is going on from my point of view. But when I look at his, I can see that on the left here, he's got lots of chaparrales and a cobra. And he's probably got a couple more chaparrales from which I counted when from the last push. I made sure that this last push didn't go to waste and that these tanks weren't going to uh, die in vain. Now you see at this point he is actually beating me by 515 points or 530 points and uh, to be honest that is a lot for a 1v1. Um, the winning score is 1500 points but there is only 8 minutes left on the timer at this point. So you can see I managed to somehow bait his uh, Chaparral's the fire at my M I nine and waste a couple of uh, waste a couple of anti air rockets at max range. I move up a BTR without anything in it to take and soak up a few ATGM missiles while my uh, Buratino sprays a bit into the oncoming uh, or on, onto the enemy position before I move up. So at the moment it's just a skirmish really and um, my Sturm is continuing to fire at these uh, weasel toes while my uh, T-55s just move up and start harassing the enemy and taking all the ATGM shots for my T-80U. Now in while this is going on I decide to uh, move my MI-9 up to make sure I can scout a bit more but unfortunately that gets taken down in its attempt now these two MI24s or I only bring in one in the end but an MI24 I bring in to soak up all these anti-aircraft missiles you can see that this chaparral on the left already ran out and these ones on the right are reasonably empty and this is why he's rushing in this uh, supply trucks to go and give them more ammo um, so instead of using MI24s which are reasonably expensive but have weapons I decided to bring in a, a few MI8Ts which are the cheapest helicopters I could buy uh, just to soak up the AT missiles and all I do is I literally just fly them straight over the enemy no no care as to land them or anything just they're literally a, a bait just so I can make sure that these Havocs have an extremely good chance of staying alive I do not want to lose one of these Havocs because they're more expensive than these TATUs they cost 165 points now that is a lot of points <laughs> Um, especially in a 1v1 if that got shot down if the, all of these got shot down I would instantly lose the game that, that, that's basically how severe this attack is however you can see that it is working and all these chaparrales are firing at my M8Ts now I should probably fly them around so the chaparrales are less accurate but um, while they're in there, I decide to move the Havocs up into firing range. See, I can't actually see very much at this moment, but my Havocs are literally just 
firing all the AT gems they can at all of targets they can see. And he gets pretty scared and he starts pulling back. Because I, I aim for both his chaparrales first, which enables me to just rape the rest of his vehicles. These weasel toes, they cost 35 each, so that's a nice lot of points right there. Decided to take out these starships so that I can begin to uh, make sure that I can move up things later on in the game. He does rush eight chaparrales into the battle and all he gets is one unit when he uses up all of the ammunition from both sets. Now I found that quite amusing and uh, knowing that my job was done on the left I move all my Havocs back to base to refuel and reload. Now I don't use them for the rest of the game but uh, that was a good enough attack to make me almost within 30 points where I was 530 points so I'm now only 30 points away from taking the lead. Seems that my secret weapon worked. Now knowing that there's not much left here I decide to push up with my T-80 and Buratino. Now, you can see that I've got three Sturms in here, these become very useful later on. Uh, meanwhile my book, which is the long range anti-air, which I was talking about at the beginning of the game, is still covering the skies there. It has the longest range of any anti-air vehicle in the game. I believe the Chaparral has 4200, the book has 4200 as well, so yeah, it matches the Chaparral, probably for bar balancing regions. Okay, so at this point, I'm not really sure what's in this bush, so I decided it uh, deserves a uh, rocket uh, artillery uh, or a rocket um, bombardment, uh, just to make sure. In the meantime, I pushed these uh, infantry that I had in the middle town forward just to harass the enemy and make sure that they weren't doing anything crazy in the middle. Now I knew this would be the best place to attack because I'd seen him bring on all the chaparrales and stuff and I knew that he wasn't going to really uh, be able to bring in anything from up here quickly enough. So he's going to be reinforcing from this point. Now if I could set up a nice position along this field I would be able to just harass all his forces coming into the game. You can see that unfortunately my MI24 gets shot down. I'm not too concerned about that. What I am concerned about, however, is losing this Sturm, <laughs> which uh, gets fired upon by four starships and a couple of Panzer Grenadiers all in one go, which is uh, not very clever, to say the least. Now, my focus for the rest of the game really was on this left side. I knew this was where I'd win from. And by uh, getting a couple of more points from destroying a few units here, I eventually take the lead, as you can see. Now, by using these Sturms, I managed to uh, destroy a couple more M60s. Um, when I took the lead, it forced him to attack me, because the time is running out. We've got 45 seconds left, and... Well, he's basically pushing everything at me to try and get enough points to win. But uh, what he didn't know is that I brought in three Sturms and Russian ATGMs in the end to beat NATO ATGMs any day. Now I've got to uh, commend this guy's playstyle because it was amazing. Like using units that I would never come up against in a normal game like it was reasonably tough to play against uh, so many NATO ATGMs actually can really catch out Russian units for the pure fact that the Russians don't have very good side and back armor on their tanks or heavy vehicles you can see I win there with 
1400 points to his 1175. So, anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed my commentary for this war game game. I know that it's been on sale over the summer, so I wanted to do a video for it for anyone new to the game. I uh, hope I've helped you out, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.